Kim Bailey had a on the yeah. subject of early closers. He had a um, a bit of a dart in the paper today about uh, he was fuming about early closing races. What's your what's your view? Go on, on what that? was his view? What was well, his, view his view was that, that that people shouldn't be asked to be shelling out all this money at such an early such an early stage, and that you've you know you, you weren't you weren't being given the agility to be able to get your horse mm -hmm. into good races mm -hmm. nearer the nearer the time. Uh, generally speaking, I think he has got a point. It happens on flat and jumps as well. You know, people entering horses willy nilly for the Derby when they're born and stuff. I, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm not sure of the benefit. I mean, I could see the benefit, mm. but you're wasting a lot of money, aren't you? Yeah. Um, About three, I think three and a half it totals to if you go in from yeah, go in and then make it there. Yeah, for, yeah. for all the for all the additional um, stages. But how many don't make it? I mean, actually, yeah. you know. I mean, and the idea 90%, is ninety percent. The idea is it generates. Significant anti-post betting interest, but I mean, but, but, well, that, well, another subject, <laughs> another subject kind of completely. Worms, but I mean, yeah. that's actually mm. that dead mm. anti-post betting. So you can't run the small. So that. that's not an argument for it. There's really, no is it? argument at all. There is no anti-post betting. The National Hunt Chase was an early closer. Why? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Instead, we have an eleven to eight favourite for the National Hunt Chase. Mm. Think it, it is. Eleven to eight. Think it is. Think it is. It was evens last time. Oh, well, guy no, 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 just two days. Two days ago, I was looking at the the the, the prices for Cheltenham. But I I thought eleven to eight. I don't think you'll, you'll get knocked over if you're no, holding no, out eleven well, to eight. Well, that's the, what I'm saying. It's further proof of the fact that I mean, national. I mean, anti-post betting is not an argument for for keeping something because it's it's a um, you know, it's a dead parrot basically. It's gone. I was about to say exactly the same thing. <laughs> this parrot, yes, absolutely. I mean, the national hunt chase. Requires CPR, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, completely, completely. Was since it since they changed the conditions, or was it already going that way? No, since they changed the conditions, right. it's very clear. I mean, the the for, the, the site field sizes before they changed the conditions were something like, and I'm just doing this off off memory, but I wrote them down earlier this week. It was something like eighteen twenty eighteen sixteen, mm -hmm. and since they changed it, it's been fourteen twelve and six. Yes. All right, so all it is now. Is a worse second division of the three mile novice chase, the Broadway or the Brown Advisor the Brown or the Advisor, yeah. or whatever you want to call the but, thing. But you remember, mm, worse to it, although you might get one or two horses who really would have added to the mm -hmm. to the Brown Advisory. That's that's the trouble, isn't mm. it? That's that's a that I agree with it entirely. I think its its purpose is is it's hard to see what its purpose is now. It's it's an opportunity for trainers who've got a number of good horses. Yeah. To keep them apart. So, and so did, it, did it not need to change then? Did it just need to go? Because we rem I remember after the, 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 the day after the Pauling horse won it. Yeah. Before it, it didn't need to. It didn't need to change. It was the, it was a it was a, a knee jerk reaction from the BHA because it was a very ugly spectacle one year. It was. You know, there, there was nothing that linked any incident in the mm. race mm. in terms of a of, of a welfare issue. Um, and there were some jockeys who were irresponsible, not pulling up when they should have done. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you, you then junk the race. But that was the, that, that it, was the cause of it. They were worried yeah, about that's the, exactly, that, why, exactly yeah, what it the came cause back was. in yeah. distance, two yeah. furlongs. Yeah, and the criteria were, were changed somewhat. Yeah, no, I, I, I th it's it's now pointless because it's, it's 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 catering to exactly the same group of horses as the other race. You've got the same favourite mm -hmm. for both races. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you've also got the. Of the, of the top ten in the betting for both races, six of them are the same horses. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That, that's, that's Cheltenham in a nutshell. I mean, that's a really good example. Where that's, you can say that about various races. And it's, it's been, I think it's a real worry for the meeting. You know, we, we sit there every year saying this is the best you know, meeting you get in the year. I'm, I'm, I'm just not sure it is, and I'm certainly not sure it's going to be. It's getting less and less competitive for various reasons. I mean, there's, you know, it's the power being in very few hands is the main reason, and the opportunities for those people who've got a number of very good horses to aim them in different directions. And more and more in the next four or five years, you're going to have more and more single-figure fields for the novice races. Nick was talking about the what that race had before. I mean, that's almost going to be. It's almost never going to happen now. And as you can say the same about the the Brown Advisor. You can say the same. How many runners ran the Supreme last year? Uh, uh, eight. Yeah, eight I mean, ten. Yeah, was it? I'm heard of a few. And that will be that will be the way it is going. And it's really hard to see how it's on. And that isn't good enough for the Premier Jump Meeting. It's becoming less and less attractive. Certainly, you know, speaking for myself, I'm saying to Nick. It, 
it's, it's sacrilege, I know, but Cheltenham wouldn't be in my favourite three meetings in the year. But you'd days. be an anomaly there, I think. I, maybe, but I think, I'm more, sure you I think more people are getting irritated. I think there was a lot of talk last year of people getting fed up with it. I, 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 if you just produce, it's great to see, you know, Constitution Hill strut your stuff and um, some fantastic performances, but you need some competition. But, the, but the, I, you and I might not be turned on by some of the narrative that takes place over the next six weeks. Right. But the, like the younger members of this office, for example, will sit and have a 45 minute discussion over whether um, Willie Mullins is going to run El Fabiolo in the. Arkle or the jail too. Correct. Yeah. Or whether he's going to run Ampere Pass in mm. the Supreme or the Ballymore. And, 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 and this has become. This has become currency. It's an alternative currency. It is also. The currency before being excited about the race, knowing yeah. they're going to run, hence, you know, going back to anti-post, now no one knows whether they're going to run two or three days. So the conversation is, where should they run? Mm. Yeah, I think that's a limited audience, personally, who would be interested in that. Uh, there may be, I mean, the people who work in the office are, are died in the wall racing fans. And maybe, maybe it interests them. I don't think it interests... I must say, I don't think it's a very easy to sell the sport on when, when you don't know the lineups, which is... And I, I don't blame the trainers. The trainers are right to keep their options open. It's not a criticism, but until until the until the declaration is made, there'll be four or five races at Cheltenham where we'll not have a clue who's mm -hmm. going to take each other on. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard to sell the sport with that, I think. Which is fine, uh, in, as long as you've got enough horses yes, that are actually going to bother turning yeah. up. Yeah. And the system's become so efficient now that that every everyone seems to know where they are with their young horses from such an early mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. yeah, this facile Vega has been winning this year's Supreme Novice Hurdle oh, yeah. since he was yes. two year old. Year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. so it it it, it take it seems to, we, we all element of finding out about horses seems to be mm -hmm. diminishing. Mm -hmm. As is Bo Zenith the best value horse in the Triumph at sixty six to one? He produced a better time than Lossy Mouth the Totoy. Also, he beat Willie's other horse, who was second favourite for the race. Surely he's better than his first run. Maybe Gary Moore timing his horse timing this horse to be right on the day. He's still running, isn't he? Though from the mm. other day, yeah, that that was that was. I think that was a surprise the other way. With yeah, three four to eleven. An ordinary favorite. field, mm. wasn't it? And he never fits a leg up. Yeah, no. I mean, he looks like again going into. He thought well, this might be exciting because the second favourite he, he he thrashed when they met before. Uh, while we're on the subject of Triumph Hurdle, only because it was mentioned early on in this email. This is from um, Mike Lilly. He says, "Good afternoon. I remember the eighties and nineties where." Most of the 18 races had 16 plus runners. The Triumph Hurdle has a maximum of 30. There's no Fred Rint to the Supreme Valley or maximum fields. Can you, can you imagine? Is it still got a maximum of 30? Are you sure about that? Don't can, know. Can you imagine the, the, the sheer panic at Cheltenham if 30 horses actually turned Don't up at the tapes for the Triumph Hurdle? <laughs> I mean, they, <laughs> they'd be but, terrified. Yes. But this is, this is because we have a Boodles. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's perhaps what we talked about earlier. There are lots of opportunities to run horses, and the downside of that, particularly when fewer people train the good horses, is that you're going to get uncompetitive racing. But it's don't just, you think just, some, people like, some people like it, going, you know, looking at it, going, right, has he had enough runs for a Boodles to qualify for a Boodles? Or oh, he could be a really well treated horse for a Boodles. He probably won't go to. They like trying to plot, trying to second guess you're, what the You're are articulating do. exactly what I suggested earlier on, that there is a, there is a narrative and a, a surrounding. The new way people approach the the, the the jump season of the Cheltenham Festival, and there are there are a lot of people who who enjoy exactly what you're talking about. I argue with a lot, <laughs> but it gives them something to enjoy. Per, there is a person in Perth who thinks that, but it, there aren't many. It, it gives them something. <laughs> it to... was more fun before, I think. If you are going to ask me my opinion, it was more fun. Racing has got to be a good thing, basically. On the day, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, uh, it is. It's got. To, I mean, that's you want to see stars. But you want to see stars prove themselves in competitive races, and we're going to, we uh, are getting less and less of that. I think Frankel's got a lot to answer for, personally. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know? Do you know where I'm going with that? No. Okay, so <laughs> I think I. Oh, the green out politeness. He was, <laughs> he was never a triumph hurdle. <laughs> was do you think? But he would have won the triumph, wouldn't Probably. he? Probably. Yes. Um, so pre 2012 and post 2012, the way people look at, at top class racehorses, it's the, I call it the Frankel effect. Okay. So. Horse builds up string of impressive victories without coming off the bridle and gets better and better and better every time until the last run when he dips slightly. But um, thereafter, everything became a disappointment if it didn't win every time it went to the races. Even if it didn't win by... The other day, they give you a prime example, Facile Vega, uh -huh. the next of a line of superstars. But let's face it, he's just following in 
the footsteps of 15 horses in jump racing in the last four years that have been talked of with the same reverence, mm -hmm. who will never remember in a generation's time, by the way. He beat a, a good horse quite easily, and everyone's saying, oh, I don't think he's as good as we thought he was. He's not that good. He's not the superstar. That... And it's this... Um, I'm not quite sure what people want out of the sport. Do they want competitive racing where horses actually run against each other and race, or do they just want a sequence of coronations? Well, that's true, but, I mean, just... And if that is Frank Hall, it's Frank Hall, but, you know, he, he was taking on good horses. And it's not, like, it's not his fault, no, but it's no, the Frank what, what, I call it the Frankel effect. No, you're right, but I'm not... It's the psychology. What you want to see is, is, is all the right suspects, or as many of the right suspects as possible, turn up and take each other on. If something then turns it into a procession, that you can mm. you you can really lord, mm. but if he if he wins in workman like fashion, he's still beating good horses. I mean, again, there might be. You're right. People may may turn up expecting horses to win by a million miles, but I think most people don't think that. I think most people just want to see a meet B rather than a avoid B. That's, if that's if, if Constitution Hill only wins the Champion Hurdle by six lengths, you you'll you'll hear it, won't you? You'll hear it. Not quite as impressive. I tell you what, there you will. I'd be more irritated if Honeysuckle ran in the mares, though. Oh, she won't. Same, no, that I know she but, but yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, so would I. The opportunity is there. I know they won't, but that's what you shouldn't have that opportunity. Mm. That's got to be wrong. How can you? How can you know? How can a sport be think? Okay, and you, you know, you can understand why. I know Hemsley probably isn't going to, but you can understand why she might take an easier option. But you shouldn't have that easier option. You shouldn't. Uh, I mean, unle unless the play is written by Alan Bennett. One actor isn't enough. No. Uh, so, so th going back to Sam Jason Davis's point about rescheduling champion hurdle trials, what we do, we do want a supporting cast, even we if do. they're massively inferior at this stage of their careers. Yeah, I'd be, I'd, I'd say, I don't think that's completely unmodern. Before my time, Arca was turning up and beating two runners. Mm. You know, and people wanted... You could have one or two of them. You wanted to have this author who already proven himself to be, like, ridiculous. And it was great, I guess, to be there and see him do something ridiculous again. But I don't think it... You know, what you wouldn't want is, is 15 of them. And that's what you... I don't mind hearing a super... You know, if Constitution Hill does turn up and win the champion hurdle by a long way, that'd be great. But what you don't want is every race at Cheltenham or several races at Cheltenham to be like that. As It, it, it will lose its interest. You know, it will become dull, and I think that's a shame. So maybe that's where, maybe we're at the tipping point now, because I'm certain that that ninety percent of the fans out there are are Looking now at the it's staying at the moment. No, they're, well, they're, <sighs> now it's staying at four days. They're they're happy enough, plotting the course of the jump season, where horses are going to run, and not necessarily thinking ahead to, to how uncompetitive it's going to be on the day, because they've been afforded the opportunity to take a view throughout the season and hopefully get proved mm -hmm. right on the day. But maybe we are at a tipping point where, in a couple of years' time, those people are going to be going, hang on, that wasn't that exciting a, a spectacle on the day. Yeah, you, you're probably right. And I think, I think, I think drawing the line at four at least was a, 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 a rare victory. That was good, yeah, that right? Was good, that was good. Yeah. That was good. Uh, it's temporary, but it's good. Um, but th the natural follow-on is that that's what race courses are pushing for you know, more and more... Uh, longer days and more days of their good race because they make money at it, mm. and therefore the, 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 the payoff for that is to lose the competitiveness of the sport. Paul Doherty had, had said something very similar. Um, he, he also finished it off. I'm lucky enough to go racing in the UK and Ireland as a punter experience. DRF Dublin Racing Festival is miles ahead. Punchers Town so much more relaxed and enjoyable. UK racing really needs to look across the water to see the better product all round. Oh, we're, we're not talking. We're talk, what are we talking about now? Cheltenham as a as a spe, as, as an experience as opposed to Dublin Racing Festival and Punchers Town. Are we talking about a leisure experience or competitiveness of the racing? Uh, both. Well, that's not true no, no, because the Dublin Racing Festival, though I absolutely love it, the, the racing is better and more competitive at Cheltenham still. But we, Dublin Racing, we don't have that build-up. You know, I was talking to Kev yesterday about, you know, what we were going to discuss today. Could we look ahead to the Dublin Racing Festival? And, and sort of both felt that actually... You know, that, that sort of build-up to looking ahead to what's going to run in the races, it's not quite there yet for the Dublin Racing Festival, not necessarily for Punchestown, as it is with Cheltenham, which starts the previous September. Mm. I don't know why that is, just the longevity of Cheltenham. Why do we need, why do we need a, an in, in, infernal, in, uh, uh, interminable build-up to the thing? I don't, I don't, why, why is that a necessity? Why can't you have a, 
a, a build-up that is three or four weeks of intense. I, I actually think that captures people's imagination much more. Trying to hold people's attention, building up to an event for seven or eight months is it's quite an ask, isn't it? These days, it's even after, it's difficult in the three weeks. I mean, you've done enough of these, um, you know, yeah, the, the preview shows, and you know, so have I. And plenty of them now are you're not quite sure what the fields are. I feel what I'm saying I, I, I agree about the two or three weeks is enough, definitely. But wouldn't you like to have some certainty in those two or three weeks about what you might be talking about? You, you could as opposed that. to you know what might go here and might go there. You Imagine the scenes if Paisley wins the stairs hurdle. Well, I'm just trying to look at the price now because a few people have put Paisley Park up as the value for the stairs hurdle in, in recent days. And he's still double figure odds, Tom. He's still a 10 to 1 shot. Home by the Lee's generally the favourite. Reformed character this season, deservedly so. Mm -hmm. Classical dream. I'm still not convinced he's an absolute out and out stayer at the trip if they go a good pace in, in that race. Uh, Chupo obviously was very good beating Honeysuckle, but are you convinced that he'll say he's, he's run poorly at Cheltenham the once he's been there before? Then there's Paisley Park. Blazing Carl Charles Burns is 50-50. Will he make it? But he keeps being backed. Ashdale Bob's surely not good enough. And the rest of well, Buzz, I suppose. Yeah. If he comes ah, back, 20-1, yeah. to yeah. non-runner non money back. What is, if, what is the Buzz latest? I'm not sure. Mm. Don't um, know. I thought they were happy with that. I saw was a picture this morning with them. Um, uh, Jess Stafford had put up with him looking out into the sunset, but I don't know whether or, or not the sun sex it was this morning. That would be sunrise, I believe. <laughs> uh, that's that's generally how it goes, isn't it, Steve? I think you're right. Yeah, rises in the right. morning. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, the yes. education wasn't wasted on you. No, 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 no. Um, so that would be interesting. Lauren Porter's currently a best price 20 to 1 shot, Tom. Best price 20 to 1 mm. shot. But seriously, Steve, in that race, mm -hmm. is that. I, mean, I, I still think Paisley Park each way at double figures is one of the very, very few mildly tempting anti-post prices for... Yeah, I'm, lo I'm looking at the prices here. Mo Mayor's Rock is going for the, uh, the Mayor's, isn't it? Marie's Sorry, that, Rock, that, yeah. that, that Marie's yeah. Rock, I beg your pardon. Um, yeah, I, look, he's come back in as good a form this year as he's been in for a few years. We know he likes Cheltenham. Very genuine. Yeah, I, I absolutely can see that. I can c completely see what you're saying. Monkfish, do you like Monkfish for anything? Remember him? Yeah, I do remember him, but... Uh, where we'll come back, I'm just, well, he's, again, long absence, and uh, he was a gold couple, wasn't he? That was, a, that was a, uh, he may run. Who knows? Suffered the um, fate of a big horse. Just yeah. Perhaps a bit too big to be completely sound. Yeah. But in in work, and Willie Mullins are reportedly happy with him. Mm. Got the gold cup entry. Got an entry here. Shaq and has got an entry here as well. Yeah, that's that is weird, isn't it? Do you it, think? Well, I think it's weird. Uh, is, is he stepping up in trip tomorrow? Isn't he? Yes, but not uh, to this sort of. No, distance. I mean, do you see him as a stay at hurdle? I mean, he does amazing things, Willie Mullins. But I think what you were, you were you didn't miss a trick earlier, did you, Steve? What's that, mate? When we were looking at Shaq and Poussois stepping up in trip, talking mm, about that earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he's after that this morning, I might have struggled. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have done as well. Um, can I, can I ask you why, oh, this is going to be such a silly question, isn't it? But why is anti-post racing so dead in your, uh, in your opinion now, well, compared to how it used, used to be? Sorry, anti-post betting, I should say. Because there will still be people out there who, who sit down and get stuck into a few And I think more people bets. do multiples and stuff, absolutely. But the, the, it's definitely changed. I do think most of the time the prices are put up to advertise is just a, a, a means of advertising for the firms. I mean... Looking at the taking away taking Chelsea, Chelsea means a, a law unto itself. So going on about that, at the moment the the betting for the is a four to one favourite for the one thousand guineas, four to one favourite for the two thousand guineas, three to one favourite for the Derby, sixteen to one for the Ebor. I mean, good luck with that. Mm. That, that. I was just looking at those. Now you do these are rose tinted, but they're just to give you an example of how things have changed. Two two of the sort of great winners of the two thousand guineas. I was looking up just to check my facts. El Gran Senor had won, it was, it was trained by the, the Aidan O'Brien of the day, in Vincent O'Brien, who was, who was well known he was the best two-year-old that he had. He came over to the Dewhurst and won, and it beats good horses, you're the best that the British had to offer, or some of the best the British had to offer. Immediately after that race, what price would that be now? You tell me, seriously, that's Aidan O'Brien, know it's his best horse, wins the Dewhurst, wins the Dewhurst. what price for the 2,000 Guinness? Roughly. Now you're going to get yes. about five to, one. to four or something. Right. Okay. Oh, ten, to one, ten to one, second favourite. Six to one, the field, Leofan. Bring it a few years up. Dancing Brave. Well, who, who, was the, who was the favourite then? Leofan, Leofan from Guy Harwood. Okay. Ended up coming um, third, I think, in the Guineas. 
Dancing Brave a few years later, again, absolutely no secret of the fact with Guy Harwood it was the best horse he'd trained for ages. Two from two as a two-year-old, didn't go for the Jewel, it won at Sandown or somewhere. It was favourite after winning that race. What price favourite going into the winter? Uh, similar, I'm going to say now. What, what, he was what, ten to one. What the price he would he be ten, now? He was ten to one favourite. Now I'm not saying there are. There obviously, I'm, I'm selecting horses who've won, and I'm not suggesting that you know things things don't change. But the it wouldn't be possible for a firm. It's, it's, it's different. They're not. I think a lot of the time in anti-post betting, the prices we're given when you or I or you and I are at the racetrack are as though they've turned up on the day. You know what I mean? Without forgetting that they've got three months to get through of training and avoiding injuries and avoiding viruses and avoiding getting beat maybe in a trial. Something can win somewhere on the flat over jumps and the price you'll get, it, it just doesn't take into account the fact that there's lots of time before he runs again. Don't you think? I mean, well, yeah. and I cannot see that, you, know, you bring it back to Cheltenham, I cannot see why most people would want to get involved towards the head of the market, certainly, in the Cheltenham races, because come the day, the bookmakers are very competitive. You know, we had the dis debate about Constitution mm. Hill last year, who was 9 to 4, 2 to 1, and, yeah, you know, it was, the it was that price on the day. Yeah. You know, because then Desert, uh, Dice Art Dynamo, Dynamo, he'd come along and people thought that might beat him. So you got that price. And I, 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 think, I don't think there's any... I don't really know where... I don't know the reasons. I'm not sure how many firms have their own odds compilers these. I don't know. Coral, do I know? But it, it's changed. It's completely changed. And I think mainly we get a price. It's an example for the PR man to come and, you know, whoever it may be, they're advertising their firm. I don't actually think there's any great intent to lay it. That's my, that's my it, feeling. Interestingly, would you have a bet in the current 2000 guineas market at these prices? So Little Big Bear's 5 to 1. Yep. But part of that is because August Rodin is roughly the same price mm -hmm. from the same yard, and you don't really know how this is going to play out. No, if no. Little Big Bear ended up being, if he had run in the Dewhurst at mm -hmm. Little Big Bear and won by Absolutely. a half dozen lengths, yep. he'd be so short. Yes, he'd be odds on. Yeah, you know, when Air Force Blue went into the winter, yeah. he was mm. yeah. really short, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. The fact we didn't see him towards the end of the season yeah. is the reason he's that. Would you be tempted by... I know we're off on a tangent. Would you be tempted by Chaldean at, at eight to one, for example, the Reddy Dewhurst winner? He looks quite a kind of handy type of horse. She does. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be interested at in that price. I can see that. You know, if we're, we're having a debate about who wins the who wins the two thousand guineas, he'd be high up there. Um, little Big Bear's got to prove he stays. There's the other reason I think he's, he's sort of right. He's not. He's not guaranteed. Do you think he? Do you think he won't? I think he will actually. I think but, he will. but there's a lot of talk that you know. I, I think he will. His personally. granddam's an art winner, yeah, isn't she? Yeah, uh, and I think the run the style well, suggests great, he, great granddam's. An I art. think there's enough hope in the pedigree, and I think the way he runs, and I think he is the best of the two-year-olds, but. I think the fact that he's, I think, I think, I think it ended under a, a bit of a cloud that we weren't seeing him. That's, that's the worry. Um, no, I mean, you've got that Brian's got a number of the top X number in the betting. That's one of the things that's changed as well, obviously, with those races. So you're trying to guess who the best Aidan O'Brien horse is, aren't you? They're two really interesting ones, though, this year, aren't they? Don't you think? Yeah. Different profiles. Yeah, completely. One, the, the no name never, very fast two year old. Yeah. The other one, a, a deep impact. Yeah, yeah. And isn't he three, to, is he three to one for the Derby? Is that him? August yeah, Rodan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But again, would you would you now this far in advance back? Would you be interested three to one for the derby? Just ask you the question. Would that would that tempt you? No, because as you said, he could easily be even if he even could be if the his, third best in his yard. Well, say for argument's sake, and this happens quite a bit. Say both of these horses, Little Big Bear and Auguste Rodin, run in the two thousand guineas. Mm -hmm. Say the outcome was a perfect one for Bally Doyle and mm -hmm. and Little Big Bear won, and Auguste Rodin ran a really promising third, for example. Mm -hmm. um, how how short would he then be for the for the derby? Yeah, Off the back point. of a promising third or fourth in the Guineas, say. Well, I mean, again, that, that, that's... Is it, he going to be way shorter? No, I don't think he will. See the stars after winning the Guineas. Mm -hmm. And again, I might have been with you. I think I was. Yeah. He, the Labbrooks came out. He was six to one for the derby, having won the Guineas. Immediately after the winning, winning the Guineas, he was six to one for the derby. And look at the horse that was placed this year, right, who didn't make it in, in, in the derby, the eventual... Irish champion winner would would have been shorter than that for the Derby, having been having, having not even won the Guineas, having yeah. been placed in the yeah, Guineas. It would, it would. I've forgotten his name. Yeah, you have, haven't you? Yeah, mm. have you? <laughs> what the Irish champion stakes winner, trained by Aidan O'Brien. Yeah, gone completely. This year, ridden by, by Ryan Moore. <laughs> yeah.
who won the race at Leopardstown, having missed the early part of the season. I don't know now whether he's filling, because he's, he's going to get it. I'll give you a bit more time. What do you mean? Who was it? The, you know, you, you op and he was ended up. <laughs> Steve, he ended up. I'm, I'm, he I'm ended up. This. He ended up being fa pretty much favourite for the R. Yeah, and and ran an absolute stinker. No, muscles, he, was, he was injured, wasn't pulled he? Pulled muscles yeah. off his off his hind end in the arc. Yeah. Um, and 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 so hopefully we'll see him <laughs> him next year. Let's hope. Does he stay in training? Well, I think it was a question of whether he was going to get over the yeah, line. Hopefully. Over the no, I've got it now. Thank goodness. Oh, I feel so much better after that. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.